Hello everyone, welcome to TechWeb Dots. Today I am going to show you how we can manage exceptions globally in ASP.NET Core application. And global exception handling is a very important topic because if any exception occurred in our application at runtime, how application will behave that's really decided by global exception handling. So let's move ahead without wasting time. So as you can see on the screen, all the green bullets I have already covered in my previous sessions. So just take a pause of the screen. If you are interested in any of the topic, I strongly suggest you to check out the playlist link which is given in the description of this video. So for this session, we will focus on global exception handling. So let's move ahead without wasting time. So this is the same application that we have used in our all previous sessions. This is a simple book management application from which we can create any new book. We can perform modification, we can see the details and we can perform delete action. The main point is what will happen if there is any unhandled exception occurred in the application at runtime. Because most of the time we try to handle the exceptions with the help of try, catch, finally to handle exceptions. But there must be a way through which we can handle the exception when there is any runtime issue occurs in the application. And what really happens when unhandled exception occurs, a yellow death screen comes. This is the screen for the developers only, but for the end user point of view, there is no sense to showing this screen. So we always display them a very user friendly message so they can understand what is the next course of action that they can do. Okay, so let's have a look all these things in action. So this is the same application. If I click on create new, so you can see we can perform title publisher, just click on create, hit on backlist. If I will click on edit, we can see we can perform all the modification. Let's uh, try one and one and save. You can see things are working perfectly fine. So let's close this browser for the moment. So this is the same application on which I was working in my earlier recorded sessions and this is a very simple typical application of ASP.NET Core with MVC with code first approach you can see we have controller we have data access and we have models and we have views okay and we have implemented repository pattern as well so if you need this piece of code just check out the link for the github repo and let me introduce one exception and see how application behaves what I'm trying to do is in our books controller in edit get action. Okay. I'm throwing one exception and saying error in edit view. Okay. Let's save the changes and run the application. Now you can see my application is loaded successfully. And you know, uh, on the edit get action, I have manually specify the exception there. Okay, so if I click on edit, so you can see exception will be thrown. Let me, okay, small the screen size. So as you can see on this screen, we can see all the information, what query issued, what is the header, what is the routing, and what is the full stack is information and where actually exception occurs. It is the books controller line number 82. This is the line responsible for this exception. Okay. so. For the end user, this error page does not make any sense and we have to show them a user friendly message. And this is one thing. And another point is we have to handle any type of exception occurs at runtime in application. Okay, so, so let's move to the code. Now you can see we mentioned this line to raise the exception at runtime. Okay, and why we see that a uh, page with full extract with information because in a startup.cs file we are mentioning if our environment is development then we use the app dot use developer exception page okay this is this is the inbuilt functionality uh, of dotnet core that we can use but what will happen if we are on production because only in case of production we want to display the user friendly message Okay, so to check on production, what we will do, we will move to the launch settings. Okay, so where it exists. So in the ASP.NET Core application, 
you will go to properties and you will find the launch settings here okay so what we need to do in place of development we will specify the production here and save the changes stop it and run it once again now we have changed the launch setting now it is production not the development so if i click on edit you can see now we we can't see that detailed information of the exception and we are saying http error 500 okay but again this is not a user friendly message and user will not be able to understand what he need to do if this occurs okay so let's go back to the code to handle this so to manage that exception let me stop it okay let's go back to the startup file so let me uh, paste here a one liner code which is required so we will uh, now what we are saying here if there is a uh, development environment then we need to use this the inbuilt behavior of the application for the developer only okay and for all other cases we want to use this error if you will see this uh, middleware app dot use exception handler and let me show you you can see uh, there are multiple overloaded versions total four and where what we can specify in them uh, by default we can use and one we have to provide the exception handler option one we can specify the error handling path and another is i application builder okay so now we are fo we are now we are focusing on the string error handling path one and we are saying we will use this error if there is any exception occurs at runtime in our application okay so what will the steps first we will create a new error controller in our controller folder okay which is a very very easy steps i have already added to save your time so just go to the error controller we need to specify these few lines and this is the place when we fetch the detail of the exception which is occurring in our application and it's up to us where we want to log that exception either in file or we want to save that exception in db for the um, research purpose or to uh, or to be solved by the developer or we can also log the exception in event log as well uh, i mean through uh, event viewer we can check that detail okay so what we are doing here we are specifying allow anonymous because exception can occurs at any point of view suppose in your application if you have login page so that will be the very first page where no authentication is required so that's why i'm mentioning here allow anonymous and now we are specifying the root that we have specified in our setup file so here what we are saying here we uh, we are telling our application if there is any exception just check out this route okay and what are the information available there just display to the user okay so let's go back to the controller and here what we are doing we are creating a one variable of exception details type and we are fetching all the details from i exception handler path feature okay so as you can see the information of this interface it represents then execution handler with the original path of the request okay so we are fetching all the details from this interface and we are managing all the information in view bag because if you want to send the information from controller to view so we can use view bag okay and now we are using the properties which will be generated runtime i believe you have some basic knowledge of this so what we are doing here we are fetching the path from the exception we are fetching the error message we are fetching error source what is the actual source from which from where the ex, uh, exception raised and the exception extract trace okay so all these uh, information i am putting into my view bag and just passing this information to this view okay and now we also uh, need to create a view as well but but just one more thing i would like to add when you will create new controller and that should be empty one let me show you what i am trying to say when you will go for the controller one if you select the controller okay so then you have to specify you want to use the empty one okay and in the same way 
you have to add one more view and which will be the error view that we want to add in the shared folder okay and this error view will be let me show you if i want to add view okay so you have to use the eraser view with empty template okay and just click on add so after adding the error view you need to go there and just paste out this piece of code don't worry if you need this piece of code the github repo link is given in the description of this video so what we are doing actually here we are passing one message we are saying the user an error occurred please contact tech web dots if this if the same exception occurred again i mean it's up to you what actually you want to uh, convey to your user i just mentioned as a literal text here and what i am what i am mentioning here in the next line i am giving one more button to the user he can go back to the you know again on the index action and he can perform if any other action he want to perform okay and for the remaining one it is a straightforward uh, html in which we are saying error path and from the view bag we are fetching the information because we passed from error controller we are fetch we are fetching error path error message error source and error stick trace okay so let me save all these changes now let's run the application and see the behavior how it's behaving now our application is loaded successfully now if i will try to perform the edit action now you can see all the error details okay now we can see this is again we are showing one error message which is saying an error occurred please contact dots at gmail.com if the same exception occurred again and we are just to make this page user friendly we are providing a go back button just clicking on this user can go back to the last action where he was okay and these details i i just uh, mentioned just for the demo purpose i mean it can be used for the internal uh, research purpose or to solve this error but in this way we can get the information we can feed that information into our backend okay so all this information is available and what is the error path this is the uri and what is the error message this is the one and what is the source this is the application name and this is the full stack trace okay so let me uh, close this and i mean you can click on go back it will allow user to go back to the home action so he can perform any alternate action he want to do if i click over here you can see user will be successfully navigated on this screen and behind the scene from the error controller we can successfully log the important information which is required to solve this problem by the developers okay now we have seen how we should handle the exception for end user and for the application point of view how that should behave okay so the only requirement is we need to create the controller okay and we need to create one view and just keep in mind how we are navigating from error page to the uh, to the home page so we are using asp action index and we are using asp controller box this is the way we specify if you want to move from one view to another view in asp.net core okay so i hope you like this video if you have any topic that you want me to cover from asp.net core point of view just drop into the comment box if you have any suggestion if you have uh, any comment just you can also mention that as well i will reply on that as soon as possible and your feedback is very important that's the only inspiration for me to create such videos and in our upcoming session we will in our upcoming session i will show you how we can deploy this asp.net core application on aws through elastic beanstalk okay till then bye bye and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe bye bye